I'm Philip Wade, and welcome to the 10th video that I'm doing now on the Click uh, PLC programming tutorial. This is Click 10. Today we're going to be stepping outside of the box a little bit as we'll be uh, programming an, an HMI, a human machine interface. You might just call it a display or a display screen, uh, but this is what it is. Remember now, we're just trying to keep this cheap and simple. Uh, this is just a little three inch model. It's the least expensive one offered by uh, Automation Direct. It's very simple, uh, but it's very powerful as well. It has a single cable that connects into the PLC. Uh, use the same programming cable to program this as you do for the programming of the PLC. It's got its own software, which also is free. So we'll do a quick download of the software. We'll open the boxes, see what's in the box, and we'll go from there. So we have a few things to look at, a couple of boxes to open up today. Um, this one, for example, has already been opened. Uh, this is an, an input-output module. Uh, it just snaps right onto the side of the Click PLC like we've uh, talked about before, but we haven't done it uh, yet. This extends the, the inputs and outputs available. We'll look at it a little bit later. Uh, this is a SIM module. It's the uh, simulator module. Uh, this one hasn't been opened. Um, it's a simulator module that... Uh, acts as if it's eight separate inputs with little push buttons there so that you can uh, simulate an input to test your program. But this is the one we're really going to be interested in today. It's Automation uh, Direct, a three inch uh, HMI. Um, HMI meaning human machine interface. Uh, this is the least expensive one uh, because remember the object of this course is to teach you how to program without spending much money. So. Uh, this one we'll get into. It's uh, very simple. It, it links directly into the Click PLC. Uh, it has its own software. Its software is free as well, so we will look at that. We'll develop some screens with it. Uh, we'll set up the uh, communication links to uh, different uh, registers uh, in the PLC and also into this so that uh, they can communicate and react to each other. This is just to wet your whistle a little bit. This is a, a radio from uh, Banner Engineering. It has its own analog inputs and outputs, discrete inputs and outputs, so it could actually stand alone out in the field. Uh, say, for example, you have some tank levels that have to be maintained constant or a certain level. With this, the PLC can request via radio communications uh, to what the level is. With the analog inputs on this, it can read what the, uh, the actual levels are, re respond to the request, send the information back to the PLC, then the PLC can tell this to turn on valves turn off valves, turn on pumps, turn off uh, pumps, whatever is needed. Uh, and you can run this in the field without even having a, a PLC connected to it. Now, this is uh, the radio. It just unscrews from this part right here. And there's a little coax extension that's about this long that can go up to the top of your panel. It has a bulkhead on it, so you can actually move this antenna to the outside. And these are pretty much line of sight. But, you know, say it's a quarter mile or a half mile away from the PLC, the communications will not be a problem at all. But like I said, this is just to wet your whistle because this is the first uh, video that we're doing and communicating with other devices. The real object of this is to begin showing you the HMI, the 3-inch HMI, show you how the free software works with this. We will develop a screen or two with this. Uh, we will do the corresponding part in the PLC programming. We'll put it all together so you can start to see something besides just the processor. Well, I guess it's time to open the box. Quick start guide, these are pretty good. They always have the little safety stuff in there. They've got good pictures showing you how to connect things. And if you need it for more, more information, they've got the little piece there that you scan to go to their website. Let's see what we've got on the HMI itself. electrostatic bag that's the device one port uh, it's got two little LEDs above it for tr tr uh, transmit and receive but it's got just a single port no other power connections nothing else necessary all you have to do is just plug it into the PLC or to the programming cable
Ah, it's taped in there, isn't it? Anyway, all that is is just two little brackets to hold it in place uh, once uh, you cut a hole and mount it into a panel or whatever. This is what we'll start with. And the same programming cable that we use to program the PLC is the same cable that we will use to program uh, the HMI. All right, here we are, Automation Direct website. We'll go to HMI. Nope, never mind. Yes, I'll go there first, real quick. Let's go to HMI. Now, I'm not on my HughesNet. I'm actually having to use the hotspot on my phone because it's faster. This is the micro series, the little small ones. That's what we're going to look at. And it's just going to be the three inch panels and accessories, a little small. Because remember, the object of this is to teach you to program and keep it as cheap as possible. Uh, this is what we'll be using is this little $103 unit right here. And uh, that's it right there. You can see on theirs, it shows. Let me do it on large. Uh, it shows they've already got something programmed in this one to display for the screen. You have the five touch buttons, this little black a dot here is actually a little red LED that's programmable and you can put whatever you want on this and make it link uh, make whatever you have here link back into the PLC we'll show you exactly how to do that all right let's go to support uh, we'll go to uh, downloads at free software and upgrades like I said the Seymour micro software is free and here it is the Seymour micro And the current version is 4.5. Let's do a quick download. Put in an email address here and download. It's just going to take a couple of minutes. One minute left. Extract all. Okay, extract. Quick and easy. Okay, this is the version that we're going to install 4.5. Do it. Next. Okay. I accept. Next. Now this uses the same uh, programming cable for your desktop icon. This uses the same programming cable as we do for programming the click. So I um, already have the driver installed for that one, so I shouldn't need a driver uh, installed for this either. So here we go. Here's the uh, shortcut. Let's go into the Seymour Micro Software. New project. Call it Project 1. Select which type. We said it was an EA3, S3, ML, or N. Protocol we'll be using. Since we only have the serial link uh, for the communications and we're just connecting to the click, it will be the Automation Direct Click Serial. But look at all the others that you can connect to with the Seymour products. Uh, everything without Automation Direct. Modbus, which connects to anything that talks Modbus. Uh, Alan Bradley, most of Alan Bradley's products there. Uh, Mitsubishi, Omron, uh, even Siemens, the small uh, S7 200s. All right, let's go ahead and click on the, the one we want. Automation direct click and uh, protocol setup. It's just, but we're going to take the default numbers. Everything on there is just the default. We'll say OK. Okay, now then, we've got this set up. Uh, would, well, we need to be able to display things on the screen and uh, change the, the loom number and so forth so that if we change the loom number, it'll bring the data back up. But we can't put anything on here until we have something to link it to. And a link is always going to be through the tag name database. 
So we'll go ahead, uh, we'll add in the first one. Okay, here's what we want. Uh, we want to be able to change the loom number, tell it what this is the loom number. So we have to be able to send from the display to the loom, I mean, excuse me, from the display to the PLC, uh, the loom number that we want to look at. And the loom number information that we want, it will collect from one of these four down here and put it in their display words right here, DS10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. And we did this, if you remember, when we did click 8, so that we could have all these in one group area, so we didn't have to use the excessive number of tags uh, and programming on the display side, that we would do all the programming on the PLC side, just to make things more simple. So with that in mind, let me open this back up. This is the tag name database. So the first tag I'm going to put in, I'm going to do an add. And it's coming from uh, DEV or <coughs> device 001. And it, this will be a, an unsigned integer 16-bit. That's what DSs are. And the tag name we said would be loom number. Loom number. The tag type or the memory type is a DS. And the address is DS1. So we just put the one in right here. Add. Okay, so that's the first one. I'm going to close this so we can look at what we've got. This is telling me um, which um, tag number it is. I don't know if these numbers are used anywhere else except for maybe your, your information as you're looking at it. Uh, the loom number is the tag name. It, the data type is an unsigned integer 16-bit. The PLC address is DS1. And which PLC is it or what device is it? It is DEV001 which we set up when we uh, did our um, click uh, serial um, setup for the protocol of communications. And this is a read-write, meaning we can read from it and write to it. Okay? Now then, we're going to add another one. And this tag name is going to be Total Yards. It's also going to be unsigned 16-bit. Uh, it's going to be DS. And the address on that one is DS10. So I'll put in a 10 over here. And I'll add. Now you notice this time when I did an add, it retained this unsigned integer 16-bit. So if you close this, and you come back into it, and you go to add, it defaults to a BCD integer 16. Now that will scramble some of your information if you're not careful. So make sure that you always have it on the correct um, the correct data type, and this is going to be an unsigned integer 16-bit. So this one is going to be DS. It will be 11. Uh, DS11, we said, is RPM. Um, and I'll just click Add again. It's, so it says, okay, what's the next one going to be? It will also be a DS. It's going to be 12. And DS12, we said, was going to be shift at downtime. Shift down time, add. The next is another DS. This will be 13. And 13, we said, is efficiency. So here will be efficiency. And add the next one in. Another DS. That's 14. And DS14 is product code. Product code. Oops our code. I'll close. Nope, see I didn't add anything to that one so I didn't add it into it. Let me go back in and make sure I've got this correct unsigned integer product code. Memory type is DS. Address we said is DS14. Add. Now then I'll close. So we've put in six right now, so they're saved in the, in, the, in the system. We haven't saved it to the hard drive yet. Let's go ahead and save it to the hard drive. All right, now we've saved our project to the hard drive. So now then, this is screen one. We can have as many screens as we want. Matter of fact, you can have as many as 999 screens. Your only limitation is to the memory. So come over here to objects again. Uh, this time we want to enter 
a number, and we said we wanted to use the decrement value. Um, this type is what I selected. Uh, the tag name is going to be loom number. Uh, the range, we could set a range on here, so we could say this is the minimum and this is the maximum, but you know we've already set that up in the PLC itself. <clears throat> Data format over here is going to be unsigned decimal. The increment and dec decrement value will be 1, and we'll just say OK. Oh, look at that ugly outside it has on it. Let's change that. Double-click it, excuse me. Um, and tell it that the theme is going to be just a line. Okay. Now then that looks a little bit better. And But now how am I going to tell it to increase and decrease? We don't have the touch screen on this. So I want to make the up key be F1. That's the little buttons on the bottom side of the screen. F1 through F5. And F2 will be uh, decrement or go down. Okay. So now then, let's go to more objects. We want to go to indicators, a numeric display. So the first one, we'll have to draw it in over here. We don't know what size it's going to be yet for what we need. I want this one to also be just a line. And uh, we don't know how many digits it's going to be. Gosh, they could have 10,000. They could have 10,000. 99,000 yards. We don't know. But we know the DS number can only go to 32,000 something, so we can only need five digits for that. Uh, this one would be total yards. So this is our total yards. So this is what we want for the first one, total yards. That's all we need for that. Now you can see what the numbers will look like over here. Let's go ahead and bring this back in and shorten this up. We don't need that much space there. Okay. Right over here. That looks pretty good to me. Now then, let's take this and copy it and paste, 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 paste. We've got four of them pasted on there now. So one, two, three, four, five. All right. Um, bring them down by one. I'm just using my keys now. I want to show you something here. I'm just, I'm just grouping this group. Now I'm getting the last two, one click down arrow. And this one, one click down arrow. Now they're all lined up, the correct spacing between each other, top to bottom, vertically. But now I'm going to come back and grab them all, come over to edit, to align, and tell them to all to align left. Now, they all look nice and pretty, aligned to the left. So this, but all of them, right now, are total yards. This one then needs to be changed from total yards to RPM. The next one needs to be changed to shift to downtime. The fourth one needs to be efficiency. And the last one would be product code. Okay. Now then, we have these to uh, display here, but if you look at the numbers and you don't know which one is which, it's not going to help you any. So let's go back up to objects, go to text, status, te static text, and over here we said this one was total yards. I might run out of space, so let me just, and let me change this also to a, a line left center. Okay, and yeah, it was ugly again. Let's go back, take these lines off. Take this off. Matter of fact, we can make it none over here. None. Nothing around it. Okay. So now then, oh, we need to be a little bit longer. Get the yards in there. There we go. Maybe I need to move this one over. I'll highlight it. Move it over with the left arrow. Come over here. Move this one over the left arrow as well. Make this one here be a little shorter. Like so, bring it down one maybe. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, Control C, Control V. Maybe we can do all this again like the other. Control V, Control V, 
Control V. Where's it at? There it is. I'll just line all these up to the left as well. I can just space them vertically, I guess. Line them left. So now then, let me just get them centered here with each one where they should be. I guess that's where it should be. Totally arch, this one should be RPM. RPM. Uh, the next one should be shift downtime. I know I don't have enough space for that, so I'm just going to type shift DT for downtime. Uh, the next one is efficiency. Maybe all that fits in there. Oh, efficient. Close. We'll try to do something about that one. Just leave it that way for now, I guess. Product code. I'll just call it product. There's not enough spacing there for everything. Okay. So, right now what we've got is click on this one. We can increase and decrease uh, whatever our value is there by one. Oh, we don't have anywhere displaying it, do we? So we still need to display that somewhere. So let's display it up here with another object um, indicator, uh, numeric display, and we'll just put it right here. And this one is going to be loom number. And it's only going to be one digit. I take all these lines off here, leave just that line on there. That's good. Just leave it there. We know where it is. All right. Let's tell it to save. Now then, we want to uh, download it into the unit itself. We're ready to download. So let's go ahead, send project to panel. It says we want to transfer, we want to connect, all this kind of stuff. I will say transfer because we're connecting over the serial port. Reading panel information. Uh-oh, it didn't do anything. The firmware in the panel must match the version of the project. Make sure the screen is active on the, on the panel by pressing F1 and F5 and holding for three seconds, which we don't have to. The screen is active right now. We can physically see it. Okay, so this takes us to the down, uh, firmware upgrade screen. Okay, data transmission. Look at this. Look at the pre-red colors. Update mode. That red means you cannot use it. <clears throat> Says it's going to take two minutes and 20 seconds here. I'll speed all this up. Okay, the transfer of the firmware is completed. Panel needs to be power cycled. All that means is I need to unplug the cable. Let it wait a few seconds, I guess. Plug it back in. I'll say OK. Transfer project to begin. Now you can see we're on the setup menu still. I'll say OK. Go to transfer. It says checking, reading panel information. Now it's on the screen it says loading project. All right, so now I've sent the information to the display, to the HMI. Right now it's all showing all zeros because it doesn't have a con communication connection to it. It gave me an error. So now what I want to do is I want to disconnect from here. I want to take my programming cable, connect it back into port 1 on the PLC. Port 2 on the PLC now, I'm using another cable okay so now I'm connected with the PLC uh, with the HMI and the PLC is connected to the
computer software through the uh, programming cable. So now then, on the computer screen, I'm showing loom number one as the current value, and the total yards is 303. On the display, I'm showing loom number one, total yards is 303. The data looks to be synchronizing, being the same. So remember I set up um, to increment and decrement, I was going to use the F1 and F2 buttons. F1, I believe, was the increment. I changed it to F2. To Immediately all my data changed here. I'm now showing loom 2 and 187 yards. And that's the same thing I'm showing over here now. And if I look down, that's what I had on loom 2. So see how simple this can be? Now I can see loom 3. And I can see loom 4. So this shows you a very simple way just to get started uh, using the display. We'll do a more detailed uh, display information later, but for right now, I just wanted to show you this is how you make your connection. This is how you work it.